Um, so I won't stay before you long today. I wanted to, um, I've got a lot of um, scriptures that I'm going to throw at you. So if, you, if you're ready uh, with your word or with a piece of paper or pen, uh, and I want you to write these scriptures down as I go through them so that um, during the week you're you're able to to maybe go back through and and just kind of meditate on on uh, on this particular passage. Um, we're going to talk about uh, a specific pack, pack passage, the book of Proverbs chapter 20 verse 11 and uh, when you read it when you read the whole chapter is sort of a lot of things coming at you in the book of proverbs and especially uh in chapter 20 but this stood out uh stood out to me as i was meditating this week uh and i was actually sharing with my wife my wife actually brought it um brought this to my attention but uh it reads is is such uh, Proverbs chapter 20 verse 11 says even a child is known by his doings whether his work be pure and whether it be right may God add a blessing to the reading the hearers and the doer, doers of his word so I want to start with this scripture because this scripture actually uh, brings out some grammatical intentions that would make you think. The first thing that came to my mind when I read the scripture was what does it mean by even a, a child? You know, and, and I had to put myself in the writer's shoes and ask myself, why would I start off a, quest, a, a sentence? Why would I start off a sentence with something like that, even a child? And I had to think about uh, some real world applications. Uh, for instance, sometimes we, we, we may say, um, you know, uh, things like it doesn't take a rocket science. You know, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to think about this or, you know, the intention here is is in Proverbs 20 11 is they're saying even a child so they're not talking to a child they're talking to someone that's supposed to be an adult that's supposed to be mature the antithesis of a child which is why they put even a child up front well what is it that we as mature saints should know what is it that, that we're being compared and contrasted against. The things uh, that, that, that they're doing, uh, they, they're known. Even a child is known by uh, his doings and whether his work is pure or whether it be right. So it, I would like to turn this around and, and submit to you another meaning for this, for this, this, this passage. I would submit to you that this passage is saying you who are mature in Christ you who are of of higher status of 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 ripe nature in Christ should be known by your doings should be known whether your work is pure and whether it be right. So how do we get ourselves into this position to where our, we're known by our doings and whether our work is pure and our work is right? And so that's what I'd like to, to talk about today. And we're going to go through several scriptures. I, I love to, to, to allow scripture to confirm itself. Uh, if, if I, I, what I, what I don't, um, subscribe to is just pulling a scripture out and having it just stand by itself out there. And there's no other scripture to back up. 
what is what's what's being said or what you're you're using that scripture um, to articulate. So let me let me um, th- let me just just present to you that in in being known by what you do in ensuring that your work is pure and that it is right because we don't work want our work to be unpure or wrong uh, I submit to you that there are three things that that the word tells us to do to make sure that we are in right standing with this proverb and one of them is to pray one of them is to walk and the last thing is to produce and we're going to talk just very briefly about these three areas praying is very serious it's very serious and it's very simple the word tells us in first uh thessalonians 5 and 17 it tells us to pray without ceasing that means we should never not be praying and what does it mean to pray well when we're praying we're communicating with the most high we're communicating with god and you can think of that communication uh, in the same way that uh, our, 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 our youngins, our children, uh, may communicate with us. As they talk with us, or even as we talk with anyone, we get to know them more and more. We're spending time with them. When you're praying to the Most High God, you're spending time with Him, and you are getting to know who He is. You're getting to know uh, what his purpose is for you. He's, you're communicating with him and he's communicating with you. All right. That is, is a prayer life. You're communicating. It is not just one way. It is two ways. So the very first thing uh, that, that gets us out of the blocks to, to being known by what we do uh, in making sure that uh, that our work is, is pure and right is that we pray and we continually pray. Jesus himself, as is written in the scriptures, he prayed multiple times during the day. And even uh, during those unorthodox times, he would always be communicating with the Father. Even as he was on the cross, he was communicating with the Most High God. God. He, he asked the Father, you know, forgive them for they, they know not what they do. That's prayer. In the midst of what he was going through, even in the Garden of Gethsemane, he asked the Father to to not allow this cup uh, to come before him. But, nevertheless, not his will, but the will of the Father be done. Constant prayer. And that leads us into the second piece, after you pray, you should walk. Now, some may say that the act of praying is in fact a method of walking you are doing something and in fact when we talk about walking we're talking about how you live your life that's means that means prayer is a big part of it it's the very first thing um i think i believe is the very first thing you should do when you wake up and the very last thing you should do before you go to bed at least but the word tells us to pray without ceasing. But then we should walk. We should walk. Okay. In Psalms 56 and 13 tells us, For thou hast delivered my soul. This is David speaking. He says that thou hast delivered my soul from death. Wilt not thou deliver my feet from falling? That I may walk before God in the light of the living. See, walking is very, very important. What you do ultimately is displayed in how you walk your life out. Psalms 86, 11 says, teach me thy way, O Lord. I will walk in thy truth. Unite my heart to fear thy name. So we walk in light and we walk in truth. And then when we look at Ezekiel, the prophet in 
uh, chapter 36, verse 27. He says that, and I will put my spirit, he's prophesying, I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. And ye shall keep my judgments and do them. So, as we're walking, we're, we're walking in the light, we're walking in the truth, and we're walking in the most high statutes. All of these things are helping us to be known by what we do. Now, you can do many things in life. You can be known by many things. But this, in my opinion, is what the most high is telling us that we should be known by. Remember, our focus scripture says even a child is known. So if a child is known by that, guess what, man, woman, child of God, you're going to be known by what you do, whether it be pure, or whether it be right. Romans chapter 8, verse 1, one of my, my favorite scriptures, um, says that there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Walking in the light, walking in truth, walking in the most high statutes, and walking in the spirit. That's your guidance. Last but not least, in all of those things, here, here is, is the thing that I believe frames how we should walk. All right, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 5, verse 7. The very familiar scripture. For we walk by faith and not by sight. And honestly, um, that's the thing that gets us in trouble. When we walk by sight. When we start doing things and walking according to what we see with our physical eyes and not what we see with our spirit, meaning see as an understand in our spirit. You know, it's kind of like when someone tells you something, they're explaining something, you say, oh, I see. Well, that doesn't necessarily mean you see with your eyes. It means that you understand. And so we need to stop walking by the sight of our eyes and walking by the sight of our spirit, our faith in what we believe. Now, that doesn't mean that we just ignore some common sense things. But what it does mean is that we're driven by the most high, by his light, by his truth, by his statutes. Okay, if you know his statutes, that ain't about faith. That's what you know. There's a difference between what you know and what you believe. What you know doesn't have to be proven. It's, it's black and white. It's right there. Statutes that are written down, it is written. You, you know those things. Okay. Now what it's saying, that may hit the faith line. That may require your spirit to understand so that you may then ultimately walk by faith and not by sight. So we pray, we walk, and last but not least, we produce. I think these three things are what we we, we should be doing so that we're known, uh, what we're known by. Um, there's some debate these days about Christianity, and even as you look at Christianity historically, um, the same people that called themselves Christians were going around uh, doing the Crusades, killing people. The same people who called themselves Christians um, treated African Americans a certain way here in America. Okay, so once you once you're known by something, okay, once you're known by something, uh, then 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 it's very difficult to to not be known by this thing. So it's important that, that we understand that you're known by what you do. You're, you're known 
by whether your doings, your deeds are pure or unpure, right or wrong. And so the ultimate goal as we pray and walk to identify whether your your deeds are, 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 are pure and right is your produce. And simply put, to produce means to be fruitful. Several scriptures that talks about being fruitful. Luke 6 and 44. For every tree is known by his fruit. For of thorns men do not gather figs, nor of a bramble bush gather they grapes. All of us are known by our fruit. That's the known part. And that's why uh, after we pray, all right, we, we, we pray to, to get an understanding of, of who we are. We find out who we actually are um, by consulting with God. He's the creator. He's created us. He, he's the, he knows who we are. And then as we begin to walk and exercise this thing, then eventually you're going to produce some fruit. And when the fruit is produced, that's when people will really recognize and know you. We want good, ripe fruit. We don't want any rotten fruit. John 15, 16 says, Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. The fruit is so powerful. Again, if you ask something of the Father, if your fruit remain, and this is a, this is a, a let's call it a, a prerequisite of asking the Father. Okay, it says that you should bring forth fruit and that you and that your fruit remain. That that's a prerequisite that when you ask of the father, that the father will give it if you ask in his name. Romans chapter seven, verse five. For when we are in the flesh, hmm, the motions of sin, which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. So you got to understand fruit can be pure or unpure. It can be ripe or it can be rotten. So we have to make sure that our fruit that we bring forth remains. Rotten fruit deteriorates. It goes away. It, it deteriorates and it is unhealthy for anyone to eat. We, that's why we need our fruit to be pure, to be ripe, right, ripe. Okay. Galatians 5 and 22, but the fruit of the spirit, and th this is it, right? I'm telling you, this is, this is the ultimate. If you're known by these things, then it is my belief that you're being known by that, which is pure and that it is right. Okay. The fruit of the spirit, here, here, here it is. This is what people should be seeing, um, is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance against such there is no law. When these things are oozing out of you in your walk in life, there is no law. Whatever you ask of the Father, it's going to be given to you. You know, there's a law that says when you build something that you should pay the bill, right? Then how do you explain supernaturally these bills going away? How, how can you explain that? Because there's no law. Because in Christ, when you exemplate those fruits, then the miracles of God can show up in your life. And the things that normally happen in the flesh, they don't have to happen that way. 
Okay, the things that that, that come into your life, the the traumatic things, uh, you look at them differently. They 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 actually get executed in your life in a different way than normal fleshly people would see it. You need a car and a car just shows up. You need groceries in the fridge and someone shows up to your house with groceries. That's because when you are showing the fruit of the spirit, when you are exemplifying these things, then there is no law. The law says don't go over 55 miles an hour. This is 50. This guess what? That law is not for people who's not going over 55 miles per hour. The law is to remind those who are breaking the law that they are breaking the law. But when our fruit is pure and right, there is no law. Last scripture I'll leave you with. Ephesians 5 verses 8 through 10. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in us all. Amen and amen. I hope that uh, this word uh, that you've heard today is, is blessed you all. And I implore all of us to continue to, to, to pray without ceasing, continue to, to walk in God's light as statues in, 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 and in his spirit and by faith. And, and, and ultimately, I pray that our fruit is pure and ripe and that we are known by these things, by the fruit of the spirit that that just oozes out of our life. And I guarantee if you do that, then the miracles of God will show up in your life. Amen and amen. Thank you very much.